We swear we aren't trying to do a bunch of shows about the coronavirus, but we talk about our lives. So there it is. So we touch a bit on quarantine life and being essential. We wonder how long it might take to get back to normal and what normal even is anymore. We get philosophical about interconnectedness and wonder if the Earth is knocking us down and resetting herself a little bit. Meanwhile, Trisha von Lichtenstein hates technology. Are you surprised? And we have a bit of a woo double shot this week. First, we talk about the other kin. And then we hear about a friend of Pitney's who thinks COVID-19 is the work of the Illuminati. Enjoy! In boutique. We may be awful, but, but we're, we're right. right. You know, I was thinking the other day about the whole quarantine thing that we're under. Even though I don't feel like I'm under quarantine because I've been working like 50 hours a week <laughs> out of the house. Well, yeah, because you're you're an essential. Yeah, you are an essential service worker. But it's been interesting to, and it's really weird because I've been guilty of this. Even though we're doing this on the internet, and I mm-hmm. absolutely love the internet, but you know how I've often complained about people being on their phones too much and how it drives me crazy. Anything happens. And rather than watching it, people have their goddamn phones in the air. Well, yeah. Making a video that they're never going to watch again. And that they're going to post on their Facebook page and no one's going to watch it. And there no either. one cares. Yeah. But anyway. no one wa- nobody wants to see your kid in the play. Nobody oh, wants to watch that. Oh, no. Yeah. So this isn't to say, what I'm about to say is not to say that, you know, people would have been fine in quarantine pre-internet, right? We well, would have they, read... They they were during the time of polio. Yeah. I was, I've we been would reading have a read lot books. about how we did that. We would have published, you know, written fanzines. Sure. We would have talked on the phone a lot. You know or, what I mean? Or, it would or have just been take, fine. take a fucking nap. You know, sleep more. It's fine. It's good you. For know, you. but... Having the internet and having technology the way it is, it's been really interesting the way that quarantine. Do you know Burning Man obviously is canceled this year because of it. Burning Man is doing virtual Burning Man. I actually just right before right before we got online, I actually just saw a tweet about it. Someone I follow yeah, on Twitter is interesting. very excited there's been about All it. these things like churches are doing online stuff. There's so many people that can work online. From home now. Like I do. Like yeah. you do, yeah. I mean, there's just, so it's going to be interesting when I'm, this is I'm all throw, over. I'm throwing my father a an, an online birthday party that it's going to be more than just him and me and my sister. That, like, both of his sisters and some of their kids. I mean, it's going to be like a nationwide multi-state birthday party. See, that, that's so cool. We wouldn't have even considered such a thing. If we didn't feel forced to connect with more people because we're not connecting on a daily basis. Yeah. You know, but I was wondering because when things go back to normal. Yeah. It's never going to be normal again. No. Uh -uh. People are going to be afraid for a long time like to be in crowded groups. I think I know I will be wary of it. I think I think people are just I think in that sense. I, it makes me wonder if a lot fewer people are going to get colds and flu, at least for a few years, because we're all so hyper aware of how germs work now, and people are going to be so trained to like. Oh, maybe. If you if you don't fucking know how to wash your hands by now, you know you. It's like when this is over, you better not go back to not washing your hands, dumbass. Oh, you know? I know. But in but and the other thing that. You know, I think there's a lot of businesses, like Macy's, for example, right? I don't think Macy's is going to survive this. 
they were barely hanging on by a thread anyway. Were they? Uh, they were sitting about closing down a third of their stores before this even started. Oh, wow. I had no idea. And I'm just throwing that out as an right. example. I don't know. But I think there's going to be a lot of places that are simply not going to survive this. Oh, well, there's a lot of, well, there's a lot of small businesses that have already folded. Do you remember yeah. Vulcan Video here in Austin? Oh, they, yeah. I mean, the, the fact that they've managed to hang on this long is pretty amazing. They're basically an old an old style video rental place that somehow because yes i remember back in the day they had every anime you could they think were, of if you and this was oh back yeah. in the 90s they had all the john waters yep. movies they were great for weird they shit. were the kind of place where if you were, if you saw a movie once and you couldn't remember what it was called but you remembered a little bit of it you could walk in there and talk to any of their employees and th- one of them would know what you were talking about wasn't Vul- wasn't Vulcan oh, video yeah. the place I remember. where I walked in saying, to- telling them how I've been looking for Hollywood chainsaw hookers for so long, and and they were like, "Well, isn't that interesting?" Because I literally just took that off the shelf to put it in the back to rotate it out of the stock, and they were <laughs> like, well, "Do you want it? We have it." And I'm like, "Fuck yeah!" <laughs> uh, uh, uh. No, that play. I remember I used to rent stuff from them all the time because it was yeah. you know pre-internet. Yeah. So you couldn't get stuff, and they had weird stuff, and I remember, you know, I always used to hook up the Sony to the Panasonic. Hell yeah, you did. And would copy. We copied We copied all kinds of shit. Well, that's the amazing thing. It's like, it's, like, it's 2020. They lasted till 2020. That's amazing. So they had, I mean, they had beyond a good run. They, every, you know, all these huge, these huge video companies couldn't last, but fucking Vulcan Video lasted. Yeah. Until now. That's but, amazing. But so yeah. I, like, there's, I don't know. There's a lot of places that aren't going to survive this. Mm-mm. But I think people are so in tune to their online lives now because of yeah. this in a way that they weren't before. Right. I'm wondering what the new normal is going to be. It's not going to be let's go to the mall. Because that's been changing anyway. Oh, yeah. Malls have been dying. I'm wondering if this is just going to be the death knell of that. I think I think you the know? only way mall culture, you know, the mall, because malls are already slowly dying. You know, the, it's so sad. But malls are going to have to figure out a way to be relevant in a way they weren't before or else they're not going to survive. Yeah, and and it's weird because I always talked about, I don't know if we've talked about it on the show, I know I've talked about it with you, you know, people, young people, they they just shop for clothes and stuff online now. Yeah. But to me, it's like the fun of going with your friends and trying on stuff, and especially trying stuff on that you have no intention of buying, just to have fun with your friends. Just to see if you look good in it. Yeah. yeah, I've said that to younger people that are used to, like, they've grown up shopping online and they think the mall is gross. Oh, wow. And I've talked about, you know, trying on clothes and blah, blah, blah. And they're literally like, why would you even do that? Like, that doesn't sound fun to them? It's like, hello, because it's fun. But So I think that this, what's happening right now is going to really push all these changes because of technology that have been coming on. Right. Anyway, I think I don't think everything's ever going to be the same again. And I think a lot of employers are going to have to make some changes because now people are realizing maybe they didn't before. I don't need to go sit in the fucking office for 40 hours a week when I can be just as productive at home. I think there's going to be a lot of people that are going to demand to be working from home now. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Um, My job that I have, uh, I already did telework. Some, mm-hmm. but we have the agreement was um, once you qualify for telework in this job, because some jobs um, I've said before that I work for the IRS and most IRS jobs, you're dealing with someone's actual tax shit and you can't take that home. Oh, yeah. You, you know? have to be in the office for that. Yeah. Yeah. Which reminds me by the time this episode comes out, if you're still waiting on your refund, you're going to have to wait. If you send in a paper return, it's sitting somewhere and no one has touched it in two months because no one's in the office. And I have no idea what their plan is because the normal thing is 
a thousand people in an area sitting elbow to elbow working as fast as they can Mm -hmm. to get your shit out at a reasonable amount of time. That isn't going to work now. And I mean, there's already someone from my old department that I, you know, the department I just left, um, who's already been sick. So we have no idea. But anyway, but my job that I have now for the last like six months, um, I, once I qualified to work at home, the agreement is, and this is what my husband does too. Um, you can work as much as, uh, oh God, what would we call it? Basically every pay period is two weeks. So that's in an 80 hour period, two days have to be in the office. So it works out Mm -hmm. to about a day a week, depending on how you work, but you can pick any two days during that pay period. Um, so like four days at home, one day in the office. Mm -hmm. But once this started, it was basically, you know, they were like, all right, if you're, if you're at home already, great, stay there. Don't come back into the office until we tell you. And if you're still in the, if you're in the office and you qualified to work at home, but you didn't feel like it too bad, you're going to work at home. home. You're going to work at home now and you're going to have to figure out a way. I mean, some people have shitty internet at home. Some people have, you know, some people don't have a place where they can work at home. But it's like I'm sorry, it's either that or you don't work. Like you have to figure it out. But now that we're all at home and we've been at home for a month because that I've been at home, I've been working at home solidly for a month now. Yeah. And it's so like our last meeting we were talking about how the hell when this is all over are they going to be able to justify telling people, "Well, you have to come in one day a week." Oh, yeah, they can. Now granted, I can understand if you're going to hold a desk in that building for me, like I have a cubicle, it's just sitting there. If you're going to hold that desk for me, then I need to come in sometimes because otherwise, why is there a desk? But I think they're it? learning now that you, you can be just as productive and stay at home. And I think people that I think we're more productive, honestly. Yeah. That, that, that weren't able to work at home for are now being totally effectual at their jobs working from home. Yeah. I think they're going to be like, um, well, we just want to work from home now. Look at how well it worked. Yeah. And I think that's going to be happening a lot. But think about how good that's going to be for the traffic conditions, for the environment, because there's going to be less pollution. Because half the people aren't driving into town. Think how good it's going to be pocketbooks, because, for example, here, gas is three fifty dollars a gallon. Yep. If you don't have to drive to work today, think of how much many people. I think there's so many benefits yeah. that are gonna that can be reaped from this terrible time just in that alone. Absolutely. You know, and yeah. and it's forcing people. And I think part of it is kind of funny because you know a lot of it is like parents are driving their kids crazy and vice versa. Oh my God. So they're finding creative ways that they can interact with other people away from their parents or away from their kids. Right. But I think that it's making the internet. It's finally useful. Less solitary right. and more social right. because of it's, this. It's like it's becoming what it was supposed and to again, be. And again, I think that's a great positive thing. Right. The internet was always promised like it was going to pull, it was going to bring us all together as a community. And it, and then it became nothing but porn, porn and bullying. And it was yeah, like, now and, it's, Oh, wait a minute. We can actually interact. We can actually live our lives this way. Yeah. And think of how much better it'd be for the environment. Yeah. And think of how much better it would be for, like I said, your pocketbook. Have you seen the pictures of the way, um, the sky over Los Angeles looks right now? Yes. Isn't it amazing? Because there's no goddamn cars. Remember that time when you and I were on our road trip and as the sun was setting, we were we were driving into the valley that where Los Angeles is. And oh, the, yeah. And the sun, the sun was going down and the sky was olive green. And it was so yeah, me and Steve noticed that too when we were driving here in December. Steve was like, Oh, there's LA. It's like that hideous cloud. And I was literally like, Oh, is it raining? He's like, No, that's smog. I was yeah. like, fuck. 
And I remember that day when we were driving into LA and I just remember thinking, we're looking at it, we're horrified by it, and yet we keep driving towards it. Yeah. We don't have we don't have an option. That's the only thing. So you know this topic of conversation totally reminds me of the current insanity that von Lichtenstein <gasps> is oh my God. exhibiting. Oh my God. This is going to be a, a Trisha von Lichtenstein story. Yes. We're it's gonna, been a long time. We get, to, we get to use the Trisha von Lichtenstein theme song. Yes. All right. <laughs> Adventures in Psychosis with Trisha von Lichtenstein. Oh, that's so exciting. Oh my God. Yes, yes, yes. I want to hear. <laughs> so we've talked about von Lichtenstein's irrational hatred of the internet. Yeah. Before, oh and, but anyway, von Lichtenstein's husband. Mm-hmm happens to work for a government agency mm -hmm. and he's never been able to work from home before well guess what he has to work from home now That's or right. they have no money coming in because you know she's not bringing any money in and she never ever has that's right yes so you know all these years i'm not getting the internet in my house i'll never get the internet and you just <laughs> mentioned the internet, and oh she God. goes off on, oh, I hate the internet. I hate Google. I can't believe every time I just hear the word Google, it just makes me want to spit. Like, she doesn't even know what it is. Oh, no. I mean, oh she God. is just like, uh, like, she gets so angry, and it's like she'd rather ma not make any money in her business. Right. Than sell... Her products yep. online, yep. which in this day and age is the only way she'll make any money, but she'd rather be broke than deal with the internet, right? Right, absolutely. But guess what? Now, her husband has to work from home where they have no money coming in, uh -huh. and the internet had to be installed in their house. <gasps> oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! And rather than be like grateful that her husband can still work and they have money coming in because right. they are like one check away from the poor house every month. Right. Even though he makes damn good money. A hundred percent because of her. Yep. Rather than be grateful and happy, she is pissed off at her husband. For work. For having to work at home and for bringing the internet into the house. Well, I guess he could bring the COVID into the house. Because, oh, with the internet, you know, my son is going to get on that computer with the internet. And then my husband has to have the internet on his computer. And that's two more things that the government's going to spy on me. Oh, God. <laughs> she thinks she's so interesting that the government wants to spy. And it's like, and I was like, but... Otherwise, they would have no money coming in, and that's that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Don't talk to me about the internet. You know how I feel about this. And then she got mad and like verbally attacked me for trying to talk her into the fact that this is a good idea. And that they don't have to use the computer for anything else. They don't have to use the internet for anything else. If he only used it for work... The government wouldn't be able to spy on them. It's not like they're listening to you through the... the oh, it's computer. so oh stupid. God. But then, but then, but then... Okay, so you know that she is, like, the most hardcore Trekkie in the entire planet, right? And she was really excited about Picard mm -hmm. being online. And now I saw... And I told her to try to, like, soften the blow of having to have the evil internet in her home, oh. right? Oh! Um, I was like, well, I saw something online that, what is it, CBS that does it? Yeah. I don't remember, it's Picard. Yeah. So I saw something online that CBS, at least for right now, is you, you can stream Picard for free. Mm -hmm. And 
her response was, I'd rather not even see it at all than have to stream it. (laughs) And I was like, it's kind of the same as like broadcasting it online or broadcasting it through the air. You're still picking up a broadcast. Right. Like, does she have cable? Oh, no. She didn't have cable? Oh, she has like an antenna? No, because the only way that they could have had cable out there in the country is for satellite. Oh. And we're talking about somebody who was so into television, I thought she would commit suicide within three months of not having cable when they moved there. Right, right. But because they were at a hotel in the beach once during a storm, and she was trying to watch the weather... The satellite cable went out because of the storm, so she couldn't watch the weather. Therefore, satellite cable is completely not dependable and a waste of money, and she's not getting it. Oh, my God. So she wouldn't allow her house to have satellite cable either, that at the time being their only option. Oh, shit. So she has a one-time experience with one thing, and that means she knows everything there is to know about Yeah, cable. but I thought oh that the God. card thing was That's fabulous, and it just illustrates her psychosis perfectly. <laughs> I'd rather not even watch it than watch it stream. <laughs> Breathe deeply, deeply, the year of woe. So I'm going to talk about a subculture who socially and spiritually identify as not entirely human. Okay. Some claim that their identity is genetic, while others believe their identity derives from reincarnation, transspecies dysphoria of the soul, ancestry, or metaphor. I would like to welcome you, Pitney, to the world of the other kin. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) What we're talking about here is, and you will, I guarantee you, you will be so fascinated that you will look this up later, and I I recommend everyone do this. Oh, I'm sure save it. As a aside, I gotta say, I'm not really familiar with what other kin is, but... Uh, our, our, I bet you know some. Our dear friend <laughs> of the Talking to the Pelts, mm-hmm. her and another crazy friend of mine that I knew from back then that's friends with her, they were very into talking about how they were other kids. Oh my God. Well, that does not surprise but me I at never all. Asked and I never paid attention because I just assumed it was some wackadoodle fandom thing. Oh. <laughs> well, it is. <laughs> The more you dive into it, the more fascinating it gets. So I'll, I'll give you a little, a little bit of just a kind of what it is, and then I'll give you a little background. So we're generally talking about people who believe that they are either the reincarnation of something that wasn't human. Uh, like, let's say, that, like they believe that elves, like the race of elves, were real. Okay. And that they are somehow a reincarnated elf, or a fairy, or an angel, or a dragon, or a cartoon character, or an alien. It could be anything like that. It's, at first, it seems like sort of like a fursona thing, because we know so much about, like, the whole furry Mm -hmm. subculture thing, and we totally get the furry thing, but this is like way 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 deeper like to the point where it has become almost a spirituality for them some of them even claim that they are shapeshifters but of course when they talk about shapeshifting they're talking about doing it astrally or mentally like they're doing it inside their head okay well of course yes (laughs) which is very convenient you know like well i'm doing it right now but of course you can't see it because I'm doing it mentally. Uh-huh. I am mentally shape-shifting into a dragon and looking at you through the eyes of a dragon. Oh, God. Okay. And of course, 
<laughs> as I as I mentioned, Dragon, it reminds me of one particular uh, little film that is one of the first things that probably will come up if you search on YouTube for Other Ken. Uh, it's a great like British TV documentary about them, and there's this guy who talking right into the camera and getting really huffy about it, I should say. And I'm sure you can visualize exactly what he looks like without me having to tell you. Uh He is talking about how he is a reincarnation of a dragon that he once lived as a magnificent dragon. And now he has been reincarnated into this puny, pathetic human body. Oh, God. Which, of course, if I was speaking to him and he was talking that way, I would have to say, well, then you must have been a really shitty dragon. Right. <laughs> for your reincarnation to to take you to a lesser life form, as it were, you must have been really bad at it. Like, you don't want to, like, live several lives as a human and then come back as a cricket. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> you you would want to, like move upward one would think you know so um now i'm going to go into a little background and this will not surprise you at all so this all started in like the 90s with you know this thing called the internet Mm -hmm. (laughs) because there suddenly were all these elven online communities interestingly the first one they found when they researched um was formed at the University of Kentucky, which I think is fantastic. Uh (laughs) Especially since we know people there, but we won't go into that. So, you know, of course, when, you know, someone has an idea in their head, if the internet exists, you can find other people that have similar ideas, and then you talk about them, and then other people read your conversations and go, ooh, I want to play. And then it becomes a thing, yes. Then before you know it, alt.fan.dragon becomes like a major hub of other kin activity. Mm-hmm. Interestingly, there was, um, there was this video game and I'm not sure exactly offhand where, when it came out, but it's called changeling the dreaming. Uh-huh. And this video game caused such a stir on the internet because these communities online were just a buzz with this game because these dark fae claimed that the game totally nailed it like totally accurately represented what it was to be them and they were 100 percent convinced that the people at white wolf who created the video game obviously were other kin like they were and the guy who developed the game had to go like on the record and deny ever being non-human oh my god (laughs) because these people it's not just like a fun fandom thing this is real and it's religion to the point where my alma mater texas state university a religion professor there has been studying the other kin oh god of course and he believes that he he has no problem classifying it as real as any other religion because mm-hmm. when it comes to the beliefs and the lifestyle and all the purposes that a religion serves in your life for these people this is all of it it is so engrossing and and acts and serves every part of their life that it is their religion Wow. And I'm telling you, it is so much more interesting than anything you can imagine. <laughs> Although you and I can imagine pretty much. But oh, since, but, yeah. But I'm 100% sure, and it did not surprise me at all when you mentioned Wolf Pelt Girl, because she, there's no question in my mind that she is other kin. She absolutely is. You know, but it makes me wonder because, well, she has, you know, a set of issues. But my other friend that claims to be this way, Mm -hmm. very emotionally damaged, abusive childhood, never has moved out. She's in her 30s. She's never moved out of her parents' house. Oh, like not even to give it a try? She was terrified of her father. Oh, because he was constantly abusive physically, emotionally, and sexually to both him and her mother to the point where her mother kept running away. 
But she didn't? But she didn't. Wow. And Oh, shit. She's just really, really fucked up. And so, of course, she goes into this fantasy realm of other kin. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering, like, is it... Is it like fandom where there's so many people like that that they need that an, an escape? I mean, is it like in the place oh. of therapy? <laughs> you know? It does make me wonder, like, I mean, because it's one thing when it already exists out there and you stumble upon it and you go, hey, I could I could be with those people. Like, I mean, I, I can understand that. But to be the first people to come up with it and because... When you when you watch these documentaries and things and interviews, and there's a lot of people who will post their own videos mm-hmm. out there about, you know, other kin life and whatever. Oh, and they do tend to associate with like kinds. Mm-hmm. Like, fey folk tend to stick with fey folk, and people who are, you know, who think they're demons tend to hang with other demons and whatnot. Oh, God. Which I think is a little exclusionary and kind of asshole-ish. I mean, there's no reason why an elf shouldn't hang out with a dragon. <laughs> well, why not? You know, <laughs> I know it's like, uh, excuse me, don't be an, don't be a dick. But um, I really, I, I oh, oh my god, I just they're just so fascinating. They're so fascinating. Like my my head is spinning. There was this one girl. It was so funny. Like these two girls go out into the woods and they're wearing their little wolf ears, just ears. And they go, they're standing in the woods and they're howling and then they're like play fighting like girls and, um, they're like teenage girls Uh (laughs) and of course they are. And they're just sort of like wrestling like children. And then they do like this animalistic kind of snuggling thing, which is like a very, you know, because that's, that's how wolves are, you know, when they're just Mm -hmm. playing and and one of them has this very, very deep backstory about how she she's she's definitely aware that she's been reincarnated at least three times because she knows specifically three of her last lives and and they were all wolves and she even knows the name of one of the wolves and I'm like I don't think wolves have names but whatever um, and so but then the other one she goes into this whole thing about how well I'm an Arctic white wolf. And then I guess the cameraman must have looked at her funny. She's like, I know, I know I'm wearing red ears. I know. It's just that I haven't gotten white ears oh. yet. And it's like, bitch, if you are a certain kind of wolf, why did you even buy a pair of ears that isn't the kind of wolf you are? Right. That <laughs> tends to make me think that you're just a fucking joiner. That's all you are. Oh, You're my just some God. teenage girl who went to an anime convention and saw cat girls and was like, ew, I want to do that, but with the wolf. Mm-hmm. Oh, and they even, oh my God, there's, and, and of course there's cat people. Of course there are. Of course there are. Oh, God. And of course it's always girls. It's Of course it's girls who think they're cats. Yeah, and see, my friend that I was talking <laughs> about with all the problems... She totally, maybe this is why her and Pelko were friends, but she identified as a wolf. That's, and that's why they stuck together. And the only thing that I could think of is because she's so completely ineffectual in her own life. That she picked something powerful? Yeah. That she picked something powerful. I, I don't know. I, I, I'm skeptical about it. But it's one of those things, like, like a lot of the people that we know who are furry, <laughs> Their fur, their persona and stuff will sort of help them work through their problems. Like maybe if that's not, that may not be what their intention yeah, is, but yeah. the end result is they choose something that's an idealized version of what they wish they could be, and then they become it because they develop a personality. And, then, and I think that's kind of fine. It's wonderful, but like I don't, th- I think these people go at go into it with the idea that they are fucking superior to humans because they are not human and i think that makes them dicks oh yeah and like again i'm gonna be devil's advocate again (laughs) it's most likely a bunch of mentally fucked up mentally ill people that are using this to escape rather than go to therapy oh my god like my friend yeah. You I know, so. I mean, that's what I go to. And I think the same thing of the vampire people, too. Oh, there are there are vampire people in this. Oh, of, of course. Because I, I watched a documentary one time about, you know, real vampires. Like the ones that live in New Orleans? Yeah, and it of was course. just a bunch of, like, hokey, crazy people. <laughs> 
fascinating. It's just, you know, it's like, like a hot topic exploded. <laughs> oh my God. I can see us getting heavily, heavily into the other kin. And I really want to thank one of our listeners who I shall only refer to as Frito. I want to thank Frito for letting me in on this wonderful world of the otherkin because he just knew I needed to know about it. <laughs> oh, I'm so fascinated. <laughs> so that's that's woo enough for you, isn't it? Oh my god, yes. <laughs> and oh my god, and it reminds me of something. It's a little woo. Okay. But it's not worthy of a whole woo ep- of a whole woo segment. Okay, just a little so a little woo tidbit. In this vein, okay. So I was talking to a friend yesterday who I love dearly, but she's a little loony, intensely weird about some of the things that she believes in. Oh, I think I know. And she is convinced. Well, first, let me back up. Let me back up because what reminded me of this was the same person, right? Okay. There is this meditation, this guided meditation that I have for the life of me. I can't remember who did it, but it is this whole thing where you visualize and the spaceship comes and takes you to this other realm. Oh my God. And these aliens take you and you bathe in these like liquid light healing things. And then you go back to earth. Oh my God. I love that. It's really fabulous. Really fun. And it has, you know, it's beneficial, but you know, it's like, just like a vision journey. It's fantasy, right? right. So I wish I shared this with this friend of mine and because of the way that they kind of modulate their voices in the meditation to make it sound more alien. Right. My friend was like, oh, wow. You can totally tell that this is channeled. This is real alien messages in this meditation. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. But anyway, this same friend who I love dearly, but this same friend we were talking about, by the way, her husband had COVID. Ah. Was in bed for 12 days. Shit. Totally fine now. Oh, my God. Thank God. Terrifying. But anyway, she was talking about how, well, you know, what COVID-19 is, it was planted by the Illuminati. <gasps> oh, my God. Oh, my God. I was waiting for someone to say that. And she, she had this long thing about planted by the Illuminati because the Antichrist and blah, 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 blah. Wow. But it's going to backfire because now all the alien transmissions are going to start coming in. And it's really, really going to change the planet. But if we can't raise people's consciousness high enough because the alien messages, the Illuminati is going to win and the Antichrist is going to take over. And it's all because of COVID-19. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. And I was just like, oh, really? Uh-huh. Oh, that's an interesting You idea. know, I was just like, you know. Wow. What can you say? Because she really, really believes it. Oh, that's adorable. And I love her too much to uh, to contradict. But to be like, like, bitch, what the hell are you talking about? It is like, oh my god. (laughs) So one of the things that I've been thinking about with all of this, you know, like we're all, you know, we all have time to sit and sit quietly and think. Now it's weird, you know. I had it's been, you know, like I said, I've been working at home for a month as of right now, and you know, not really leaving the house to do much of anything. And I have all this time and, you know, you'd think I could have, you know, binge watched a series or watched a bunch of movies and God, I really haven't. I have just spent so much more time just sort of like journaling and reading and sort of sitting quietly listening to music and just not just kind of being very mellow and that's kind of nice. But because of that, I've been doing a lot of thinking about like, what, what are we like, like, where are we going after this? Because right now, like everything kind of stopped and we get to look around and go, Jesus, we're really fucked. Like Mm -hmm. all the things that you were too quote busy to pay attention to before. Now you can see it. You can see how, 
all these people, you know, who have the, well, you know, you're just flipping burgers or, well, you're just, well, you, you're just a cashier at a grocery store. Guess what? Yeah. We're the ones that all those naughty people are depending on now. Absolutely. And I find that so ironic. It's like all these, <laughs> all these jobs that were considered low level, unimportant, stupid jobs that you shouldn't get paid a living wage on. Those are the people that are saving our goddamn lives right now. Yep, yep. It's like, bitch, I'm essential and you're useless job. You're at home not making any money. And I'll tell you what, <laughs> I am I am sitting at home working, but I have to say working with air quotes because how hard am I working really? The amount of money I get paid to do my job. My job is not any more important than anyone else's job. But the mm-hmm. fact that the fact that, you know, the kind of jobs that are you know, food delivery drivers and things like that. The people that I can't imagine going through all this without all these people that don't get paid anything. And Mm -hmm. I know that that's a very common thought, you know, that people are really realizing that, but are we going? You're right. I've read things about that and it's actually made me feel good. Like I don't feel like a loser for, working where I'm working. Right, for getting a job in a store at your age, you know. Yeah, exactly. But you're doing very important work. These all these all these people that need stuff and you are giving them the things they need, you know. And if we don't somehow come out of this with a for fuck's sake, $15 minimum national minimum wage or something, if we don't mm-hmm. come up if we don't come out of this experience with something like that, then it's never going to happen. Because right mm-hmm. now, it would be hard to say that the vast majority of people aren't 100% behind that idea. Because we can see it. We can see how yeah, important Yeah, because all those people, and, they, they, and I think they're going to realize that they've always been totally dependent on the people that they look down on. Right, Absolutely. It's like, you know, you know, the people who don't clean their own toilets, who look down at the person who cleans their toilet, it's like, bitch, do you know how disgusting your toilet would be if she wasn't there? You really need to pay more attention to the people that you think are beneath you. Yeah, it's really interesting. And I, and you know, I, it's it makes funny, me... like, as much as I love movies and video games, mm-hmm. let's face it, those jobs are cushy, fun, creative jobs that people enjoy doing they should make one one hundredth of what they make oh my god and the people like me and nursing home people should make 10 times what we make now absolutely you know what i mean absolutely because i'm sorry what the fuck does an actor making a hundred million dollars a movie for going and fucking around and having fun for three months and then not working for nine months it's ridiculous yeah Whereas I've been working my ass off every day of my life. Right. Oh, yeah. You know, it does not make any sense. When, when I think about when I first started working at the IRS, and, <clears throat> and I, I mean, I never had some big goal of being a federal employee. I, you know, I got a bachelor's degree in liberal arts, and I knew that wasn't going to get me a job. But I thought, you know, they love to tell you that having a college degree is going to help you get a better job. And that is a lie. Um, I mean, it's more Mm -hmm. of a lie now, but it was a lie in 1991 too. And, um, I, I busted my ass for $5 an hour for years. I had just convinced this one little company that I worked for this little, I was going to say mom and pop company, but it was a mom and mom company, wasn't it? The lesbians that I worked for. Oh, yes, <laughs> when I, it when was. I worked for the lesbians, the lesbians who thought that no one could tell they were lesbians. Oh God! <laughs> That's a whole other story. Oh my God! But you know, I finally convinced them that I was valuable enough to them to make five fifty an hour. Oh my God! For the for the, the amount crazy? of work that I did, and the fact that I would I would be the one employee all day in one of their stores, in a mall where anyone could come in at any time, and do you think I could go to the bathroom? Do you think I could take a lunch break? Oh, and that's right, because you used to do open to close by yourself. I would, didn't I would, you? I would be, I would open the, the store and be there by myself all day. And sure, there was a bathroom, but as this, you know, the second I went back there, someone was going to open that door and come mm-hmm. in the front of the store, and someone had to be there. I mean, I worked so fucking hard for those people, and 
how much I worked to convince them to make 550 and then, you know, saw a TV commercial that the IRS would pay a data entry person six ninety nine an hour. Uh-huh. Oh my God. And I was like, <laughs> they'll pay me seven dollars to sit in a chair and not have to talk to the public? And all I have to do is type? How do I get that job? But um but when I think about how a lot of a lot of wages have not gone up that much, despite the fact that the cost of living, especially here, you know, I mean, it used to be cheap to live in Austin. That that's why we had so many artists and musicians. Mm, yeah, we not were, no you know, more. people would people would come here because they could afford to live here and we had all this great, you know, it was a, such a hippie town and whatever. And now it's like, well, a hippie's not going to live in a two hundred thousand dollar condo. You know, it's like that's not. Oh that yeah, shit doesn't, that shit doesn't fly. But the thing is, like, like everybody's viewpoint has to be changing right now, and it makes me wonder how much. Well, God, I think so much of it's going to depend. Like, what? How is this going to affect the election in November? In America. I don't understand how anyone could be looking at this administration and not seeing that they are committing genocide. Oh, but there's a lot. It's still, I think it, I, I, I keep, you know, I've been looking at that a lot. I still think it's pretty much 50 50. It's love Trump and it's hate so Trump. weird. Like, it's so, it's so frightening to me and shocking. And it's like, I think the people <laughs> who were, who liked him to begin with, he, he is deciding that certain states, because, they're, because their governor won't kiss his ass, that certain states mm-hmm. don't get ventilators and shit. And it's like, that is, that is absolute genocide by negligence. But because they think he's funny or whatever, or whatever it is they like about him that I will never understand, they are like, well, but he's my guy, though. And it's, and it's one of those, like, I can't believe I'm still having to argue with people who won't do what they have to do to get him out of office going, but I don't like Joe Biden. It's like, I don't fucking care who you like. It's still better. I yeah. mean, you know, it's not my job to tell you Anybody what to vote for. Anybody better it, than, than Air Trump. Exactly. You know, we, you know be, and I, and I've had, I, I mean, why did I get into yet another argument with a bro yesterday and don't fucking argue with me about not all Bernie supporters are bros. You know what? If your head is far up Bernie's ass and you think he's a fucking God and you think he can do no wrong and you think he could win this election, even though he couldn't win any fucking primaries, then you're a fucking bro. If you want to argue with strangers on the internet for daring to suggest that, Hey, maybe Elizabeth Warren would be a better choice. You're a fucking bro. You know, and if you... Yeah, and even so, maybe she would be a better choice, but at this point... She's not an option. Shut the fuck up. We have up. to go with yeah, our option. Exactly. And like I always say, do, do you think I wanted to vote for Al Gore? Do you think I wanted to vote for John Kerry? No. But George W. Bush, we already had... We had him as a governor. We knew. We knew what a useless piece of shit he was. And we tried to warn the rest of the country. But no, the rest of you all voted for him. And that, and look where we are. You know, but God is... But God, I miss him. It's... I know. God damn it. I miss W. And I never thought... He's a goddamn war criminal. <laughs> and I still would prefer him to this semi-sentient circus peanut that we have going right now. It's like, oh my God. Oh, it's just But crazy. that, but see, that kind of shit is what makes me worry. Because I I want to believe in, you know, I want to believe in the, the good nature of people. But I really, I, it makes me afraid that we're just gonna, we're gonna reelect this dipshit and... Even though, you know, like, you know, the guy who voted about, oh, I could, I could shoot someone on Fifth Avenue and they'd still elect me. Yeah, well, he's killed lots and lots of people now. Yeah. And apparently you're still fine with him. So it's like, but how many of those people are the same people who early on in this were demonstrating not giving a shit about their community by, I, I know they said I should stay inside, but it's spring break, dude. I gotta go get hammered. I gotta go to the beach. 
Oh, you know, and that changed a lot mm-hmm. of people's perspective, though, because a lot of those kids got sick, and now a lot of those kids are going back on what they said before, which I thought was interesting. I mean, I'll, you tell, you, I'll tell you what, Austin, here, we were doing really well. Like, as far as, like, large cities go, we were doing surprisingly well with the number of cases we had. And then when kids came back from spring break... That was exact. Now, it could have been a coincidence, but at least four UT students, I think, came back with it. Oh, I'm sure that that's a contributing factor. And you know, they smashed so much the whole time they were gone. They just drunkenly smashed as many times, as many people as they could. Oh, hell yeah, of course. And, oh, they, they gave, they gave their cooties to as many people as possible. Absolutely. And, and so like, you know, for the longest time I was, I was only seeing the negative shit, but I, I keep trying so hard to think about how we're being forced to look at our world differently and we're being forced to see, see the people who were beneath us. Mm-hmm. as more important and and this kind of thing so it makes me wonder like you know are those of us are the people who might have been in the middle who didn't think about it much are they leaning more in the direction of no i realize i really do care about my community and i really do care about my neighbors and i am willing to do my part like are people taking a stronger stand on it now because i think so because i've so. noticed like here there's a there's a thing going on here in san jose yeah where you know, because there's a lot of homeless people here oh, God. because it's so expensive to live. Yeah. And and a lot of, you know, poor people because, you know, whatever. I mean, shit, you can a... make $40,000 a year there and be homeless. Oh, yeah. Because I think that doesn't low pay for income, shit. If I'm not mistaken, I was looking at low income is considered by the county to be anything under $80,000 a year oh, is low God. income here. Oh, my God. I've been working my whole life and I've never seen anything remotely close to 80. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> there's a thing in San Jose now where these neighborhoods, they're putting up tables with signs uh-huh. and they're doing like bagged meals that they're just putting out for anyone who needs them can come take. Oh, I love that. And oh that's unheard of. It's like people are actually thinking, is there something I can do? Oh, I can do this. Yeah. And yeah. It, it is. It's becoming a thing now that That's they're doing beautiful. that. And I think it's great. Oh, my God. And one thing that, you know, one thing that actually also occurred to me, and it, mostly it has to do within the United States because of the way, you know, you know, individual states are sort of pitted against each other because we have a president who thinks this is a game. Mm-hmm. Um That even, like, the borders between the states start to feel like bullshit. Like, if a red state is up against a blue state, like, like people in Alabama, all the states around Alabama had told people, had, had told their people, stay home, keep your ass at home. Don't you fucking dare go out. Just give it a couple of weeks. We'll, we'll reassess in a couple of weeks. You can handle this. And Alabama... Is just like derp, derp, derp. We, you know, no, I think we're fine. We're just fine down here in Alabama. <laughs> oh, I know. So one little cluster of people is in danger, even though the rest of us all seem to be getting with the program. But this because their governor is a moron and just going, what? Everything's cool. Did you, oh, my God. Did you hear? Was it a week ago when the governor of, um, of Georgia? Uh, what? I think it was Georgia. Um, said. You know, we only just found out this week that you could uh, you could spread it w- without even having any symptoms. And it's like, bitch, we've known about that since oh January. Oh, my God. What is this we, Kimosabi? Had a drink about an hour ago. Fill somewhere by the table or maybe the floor. Hey, we're the girls from Despair and Distress. We get together every week with things that creep each other out, like cockroach milk, goblin sharks, Chernobyl disasters, ants, fighting hyenas, fucked up children's stories, the dark web, bloody Charlie town holes, and camel rape. Yeah, so um, I don't really know where we go after camel rape, but oh yeah, we're drinking. And listen to us every... Everywhere you can find your podcast and tune in every Friday for a new episode. Sorry, I'm trying to read this. It's not working out.